After a brief renaissance in the 2010s, the Russian military aerospace sector sort of hit problems at the end of the previous decade. As sanctions hit in 2014, financial woes caused plane orders from the Russian Ministry of Defense to slow to a trickle. Export sales were also not healthy, but that's another topic. Then the war came in early 2022. And despite further sanctions and war losses of 2023, it appears that Russia has managed to course correct the ship and start increasing its overall combat jet force, despite the war. This video will explore Russian production of 2022 and 2023 in detail, Russian losses in Ukraine and prospects for 2024. Is Russia really on track to compensate for its entire war losses in the near future? In 2023, the war in the skies continued. Russia continued to lose jet fighters. While a precise count is hard to get, we will rely on a few sources to try and compile some figures. We'll go into more details about methodology near the end of the video, in the losses methodology section. But for now, let's just mention the figure from the famous Oryx website, which tallies photos of wreckages, but also uses claims by various parties. Oryx says 22 Russian combat planes were lost or damaged during 2023. Specifically, four Su-35 multi-role fighter jets, six Su-25 ground attack jets, five Su-24 ground strike jets, and seven Su-34 ground strike jets. It's no wonder strike planes feature heavily among losses. Those planes are usually heavily exposed to Ukrainian air defenses. Not all losses are from enemy action. Planes can have accidents, even in peacetime. When an air force of Russia's size operates, especially under wartime stress, there are bound to be a few accidents a year. Oryx claims 3 of 22 plane incidents being non-combat related losses. 18 are losses due to enemy fire. We also can't know if there are more losses. It's plausible that the plane gets hit in the air, then manages to limp over the border back into Russia, but then crashes somewhere in Russia before reaching a base. Photos of such a wreckage may never reach the internet. Even less likely to emerge would be photos of damaged planes managing to land. Frankly, just one damaged plane against 18 destroyed ones doesn't really ring true. It's just natural that there will be a damaged plane for every one or two planes that were shot down. In 1991 air war over Iraq, for example, US-led coalition had lost 40 airplanes with another 46 damaged in combat. Some will say that 1991 Iraq featured a lot of anti-aircraft artillery, which is more likely to just damage low-flying planes, as planes then didn't use standoff weapons as much. But even if we take away planes lost to or damaged by anti-aircraft artillery, we're still at 29 planes lost and 23 damage to SAM missiles alone. So it's to be expected that the damaged plane count is at least two-thirds of the lost plane count. For Ukraine, that means that on top of 18 planes downed, there are likely to be at least a dozen damaged planes, and not just a single reported damaged plane. So that would suggest some 18 planes being lost in combat, 3 more in non-combat accidents, and plausibly 12 to 15, give or take some, being damaged. It's also likely there were further planes lost all over Russia in non-combat accidents. Binkov managed to find 4 such reports in 2023. Given that pre-war years usually had three or so combat plane accidents per year, said number is plausibly correct. So the final tally may stand at around 18 lost in combat, 7 or so to accidents, both near Ukraine and a long way from it, and perhaps some of the 15 or so damaged planes ended up not being repairable. But how many planes did Russia produce in 2023? That too is a matter of estimate. Prior to the war, Russia openly published the exact number of aircraft deliveries, but in 2022 and 2023 said information became unavailable. What is known is that in 2021 Russian air forces had just 17 combat planes delivered to them, specifically two Su-57s, three Su-35s, six Su-34s, four Su-30s SM and two MiG-35s. Now, those two MiG-35s were the last of their kind. The whole project is really a stillborn one. Eight were ordered and delivered out of political reasons. But it's not in production anymore and it's very likely no more were produced in 2022 and 2023, 
as production ramp-up alone will require two years. Those two years are basically a standard for any plane today built anywhere around the world. You can't order long lead items and make a complex modern combat plane in much less than two years. Which means that any plane Russia made and delivered by the end of 2023 had to be ordered by the end of 2021. Of course, Russia probably knew it was gonna invade back in late 2021. But as we saw, it erroneously thought there would be no big war. It was woefully unprepared for a real war. So it's equally plausible it did not start planning for some huge wartime production jump in 2021. That being said, some production ramp up was likely planned for other reasons. Su-57 production, for example, was long planned. Su-57 is Russian best and latest fighter jet, with significant stealth features. There was a 76 airframe Su-57 contract signed in 2019, with deliveries planned through 2028. 2022 saw the delivery of six Su-57s. Being the highest profile program, Russia actually boasted of those deliveries. 2023 saw a further ramp up, but the exact figure is disputed. Usually 8 to 11 airframes are claimed. Su-34 is a workhorse of the Russian Air Force in Ukraine. A plane that's eventually to replace all the Soviet-era Su-24s and possibly even some of the Su-25s. In late 2020, the last of the Su-34s from an old 2012 contract was delivered. While there was a small contract signed to deliver 24 more planes by 2023, the whole production line was slowing. Hence that lull in deliveries come 2020. In 2021, deliveries started increasing again, and it's plausible that 2022 and 2023 deliveries went up again, as the new contract airframes were worked on in earnest. There's no hard number, but it's estimated some 8 to 10 Su-34s were delivered in 2022, leaving another 8 to 10 for delivery in 2023. In 2022, there was another Su-34 contract announced, but with no other details released. Fruits of that wartime contract should be seen during 2024. It's thus quite plausible Su-34 deliveries will rise in 2024. There's also the Su-35, a single-seat multi-role fighter. Its deliveries were curtailed after the initial two big contracts were fulfilled. Su-35 was supposed to be the next big thing in exports to other countries, but various reasons precluded that. The overall production also fell. Russia kept the production running, but at lower volume. Two more smaller contracts were signed in 2020 and 2021, for a total of 30 airplanes delivered by 2024. Now, 2022 production is not really known. There was a mention of one batch of Su-35s delivered in 2022, with photographs of three planes. There might have been more. Certainly, 2023 production is likely to approach 10 airframes, if the previous contracts are to be met. There were some headlines about possible much higher Su-35 production numbers, but Binkov believes those erroneously count Su-35 airframes that were once bound for Egypt. Those have been sitting at the factory for a few years now. Then there's the Su-30 SM multi-role fighter. It's basically a slightly cheaper and slightly less capable Su-35, with a bit more focus on ground strike capabilities instead of air combat, compared to the Su-35. Su-30SM had finished earlier contract deliveries in 2018. There were no deliveries in 2019 and 2020. But there were new contracts signed during those years, for over two dozen more planes to be delivered by 2026. 2021 saw delivery of first four airframes. Wartime production ramp-up would still not be applicable back then, with the mentioned two-year delay. There were media write-ups of at least one batch delivered in 2022 and two batches delivered in 2023. But it's impossible to know how many planes were in a batch. Plausibly at least two, but possibly maybe even four per batch. Likely estimate for 2022 is four to six airframes, as that's the usual ramp-up. 2023 is harder to estimate, but given the low number contracted and 2026 delivery goal, it's plausible the 2023 count didn't increase much. So overall, 2022 and 2023 production of Russian combat planes should have been something like this. The list includes one brand new 2160M bomber delivered per year as well, for completeness sake. 
Hence, in 2023, Russia plausibly received anywhere from 29 to 40 combat airplanes. As we said earlier, during the same year, Russia plausibly lost some 18 planes to enemy fire, 7 to various non-combat accidents, and maybe a few of the roughly estimated 12 to 15 damaged planes may never be repaired. Even if one assumes a few more planes lost over the Oryx count suggests, just for extra safety, a middle-of-the-road estimate for Russian 2023 production is still likely to be ahead of it, if ever so slightly. So 2023 likely saw Russia starting to replenish its Air Force numbers, by a tiny margin of course. 2022 saw a big hit, with 67 combat planes lost or damaged, according to Oryx. Five more planes were lost in accidents, not mentioned by Oryx for that year. If one adds again two-thirds of said number as damaged planes, rough tally is some 70 planes lost and little over 40 more damaged for 2022. To repeat the earlier table, during 2022 Russia likely received 22 to 26 combat planes. 2024 may see quite a jump in plane deliveries, as by now wartime production ramp-up should be applicable. Whether that will be 40, 50 or more planes, that's impossible to say right now. It's still likely production will not double within just one year. Fighter planes aren't missiles, they're more complex. But Russia is capable of making pretty much all plane parts on its own. Sanctions on Russia have proven to be more of a temporary nuisance than a measure that would stop their advanced weapon system production. It's likely there were some bottlenecks impacting production, at least a little, but for example cruise and ballistic missile production seems to have increased five-fold by late 2023, compared to 2022 averages. Guessing Russian air losses in 2024 is also a fruitless task. If anything, it's likely that Russia will fly as much as Ukraine allows it. In 2022 Russia flew more over Ukraine and deeper into Ukraine than in 2023 and it paid the price, with three times as many planes lost. 2023 saw more careful air ops by Russia. It's plausible those will continue to be careful in 2024 as well, as Ukraine keeps getting new SAM systems from the West. F-16s may help there as well, but will likely not be as much of a factor. If you wonder why that is, check out our previous videos on F-16s for Ukraine that we did last summer. Before we go on, a 30 second update on our channel, bear with us. Our last video used footage from Ukraine war, which is something YouTube can have issues with. That's one of the reasons, besides ever dropping advertiser earnings, why we are considering making an extra video here and there, which we would then host outside YouTube and monetize using different methods. We'll tell you more about that when we make a firm decision. But for now, it's important that you just hit that like button if you truly liked our video, that you subscribe if you like our content, and that you share our videos. That's what keeps us going. Anyway. Now for those losses methodology that we mentioned earlier. Oryx isn't the only source, but let's stick with them for a bit. Some of the sources Oryx uses have themselves said they are unsure if the wreckage shown is old, and perhaps shows a plane that was already photographed earlier. Some of the planes are as said damaged. Ukraine may strike air bases with long-range missiles and damage planes on the apron. Or planes can get hit in the air, but still manage to return to base. One of the 22 Oryx listed incidents was counted as damaged plane, leaving 21 being lost for good. Though with planes, even if they manage to land damaged, the extent of damage can sometimes be so serious that the plane is written off or extensive repairs are needed, with the plane sent back to the factory and unavailable for a year. Then again, some US planes damaged in 1991 Iraq managed to return to duty before the month-long air campaign ended. Another source, the war spotting website, listed 12 combat planes lost and one more damage during 2023. Now, war spotting does the same thing as Oryx, it tallies up images and videos online. Often, both websites use very same images. The difference between counts comes from war spotting being more conservative. If an image or video is blurry and not much can be deduced from it, war spotting won't count it. Oryx will use other sources, like a person's claim commenting on the image, to identify a plane. 
but the biggest difference between the two is that Oryx sometimes uses claims as proof, even if there is no imagery available. There is a Russian military blogger named Fighter Bomber who they often like to use. That person is allegedly part of the Russian military. And sometimes their blog contains claims slash admissions of Russian planes being lost. Oryx also accepts official Ukrainian military claims as well, when corroborated by other pieces of info. Like when Ukraine said it shot down three planes in one day in late 2023. Hence the disparity in numbers. While war spotting may be too careful and it's perfectly plausible there are some shootdowns of Russian planes and their wreckages which were never filmed or photographed, Oryx may be at times overestimating a bit. But we can't really know for sure. That's why they call it the fog of war. Both Russia and Ukraine have a vested interest in not being truthful. Ukraine may get more air defense systems from the West if they appear effective. And both Ukraine and Russia will boost the morale of their forces if they claim success. Throughout history, losses were always later on found to be pumped up by the side who caused them and hidden by the side suffering them. So the best we could do in this video is to more or less accept the number of lost combat planes Oryx suggests, figuring they might be some middle of the road estimate. As there is always the possibility that even more planes were lost and simply not reported. And then we added some damaged planes, using the Iraq air war example. Maybe Russia will not lose meaningfully more planes in 2024 than it did in 2023. But if that happens, it will also mean it flew less, or didn't fly as close to the front line. So the overall effectiveness of the Russian Air Force may not be significantly better. The Ukrainian military claimed seven Russian combat planes downed in mid-February. Oryx so far lists just two Su-35 as downed in the same period. But one thing is apparent. Russia is making more and more fighter jets and is likely on track to cover both the 2022 and later losses within just a few years. Of course, that may also mean Russia will continue being risk-averse, as it was in 2023. In a way, those smaller Russian losses may also be a positive thing for Ukraine, if they mean Russia flew less and didn't dare venture inside Ukraine. A question of usefulness of Russian Air Force could then also be raised. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.